Yeah, we're looking at another 25 key USB keyboard here. Um, this one's a sort of deluxe version, I would I would call it. It's the Axiom 25 from M Audio. Um, this features more than your usual uh, number of controllers. I mean, as well as the 25 key keys, you've got eight pads and eight knobs. These are all assignable. The thing about these is they're continuous, so um, there's no stop stop point. So you can just pick up your parameter changes where you where you uh, leave off. Um, transport control, various programming options. Nice big LCD. You got a bit more information. Great big octave transpose for quick switching. Nice little accessible pitch bend and mod wheel. Um, the keyboard on this is actually really nice. It's got a sort of semi-weighted kind of feel. Um, it's more like a hammer act type action, a bit more chunky. Um, it's also got aftertouch, which is uh, a bit more unusual on this. The uh, keyboard's this size. Um, round the back, we've got a power switch off on. We've also got uh, the 12 volt DC, sorry, couldn't see that there. A USB input, a MIDI in and MIDI out, sustain and expression pedal. These are both assignable. Um, the difference is with this, I mean, obviously, we've got an additional MIDI input here, um, so you've got a bit more flexibility than some of the other um, smaller key, smaller USB interfaces. Um, so you could plug in, say, well, you know, I don't suppose you want pads, but maybe you might have a, a MIDI drum kit or a sync unit or somebody else might be jamming along or whatever. Just a bit more flexibility. Um, it's kind of quite a substantial beast this i mean it's not not going to be quite so easily portable um but it's a really handy like desktop sort of feel it's got good rubber feet i mean it sticks well on this it's got a nice sort of solid feel to it weighs kind of five or six pounds kind of chunkier than the other ones if you have a look let's have a look here at the oxygenate v2 which is also from m audio um, you can see that it's, it's considerably bigger there Okay, um, this is definitely more of a portable device. Again, this is available in a 49 key and a 61 key, what's five, four and five octaves. Um, the bigger versions also have eight additional fader, uh, faders, which are all assignable, and a numeric keypad, which is handy for entering parameters. 20 memory locations, comes with templates for Reason, G Media, Oddity, uh, Imposca. Uh, and various other things. It's got three zones and three groups. Now what this effectively means is that you can assign uh, different areas of the keyboard so, uh, to, to different transposers. So you could actually, I mean this keyboard is quite small, but you could split the keyboard, have, have it transmitting on different channels um, with perhaps different transposer values, which is a bit mind boggling on a keyboard this size, perhaps not so appropriate. And also um, you could be transmitting uh, controller numbers on different MIDI channels per zone. Um, the thing about the pads is um, there's an M Audio MPC like controller. Um, what they had was they had velocity and pressure, so you could press them and actually send another parameter. Um, these can't do that, they can do either. So you can have it transmitting notes, controls, have the, but they also will send pressure data which can be assigned to any controller. I mean, what would be really good is to be able to have the transpose buttons work on the pads, which they don't. But that could probably be something that could, could happen maybe in a software update, I don't know. Let's plug it in. They say it's class compliant, which means it should just install immediately on both Windows XP and Mac OS X. So I'll just grab the USB cable. Um, once again, they've included it. They didn't include the power supply, um, but I guess that's not so much of a problem. Uh, and I'll power up here. As you can see, nice blue display, various uh, little blue LEDs, light blue LEDs, very nice. Oh, yeah, lovely. Anyway, um, let's have a look and see if it's, if it's loaded up. I think it should probably just come straight in. Um, there wasn't too much trouble with M Audio stuff. Right, here we go. We've got the USB axiom straight in. As you can see, it's got uh, two separate MIDI ports, so you've got an in and out via USB, and then the additional input is also listed there. So 
those are all accessible in uh, whatever program you're running. You also get the Enigma editor, which is obviously very handy for programming this, uh, particularly if you're going to get into complicated zoning and what have you. Um, Again, uh, it doesn't come on the CD, which is a shame, but I suppose they might be updating templates or whatever. All you have to do is go to the M-Audio website, register, and you can download your latest version. Okay, so let's just uh, check this in logic and make sure that it talks to the sequencer and does what it's supposed to do straight away. Um, let's have a look here. Let's try the transport controls. Hit play. Here we go. That's pretty good. Straight away. Rewind, fast forward, and record. There we go, we record. That's great, so that's all well and good. Okay, in Logic here I've got uh, the G Media Oddity, uh, a classic rendition of the ARP uh, Duophonic. What we'll do is we'll lo load up one of the Oddity patches from the Enigma Editor and see how that's all mapped up. Uh, Axiom defaults. Right, we've got G Media Oddity, so let's load that one. I think I'm going to send that to... So if you, go to, if you just go to there, I'm going to send it in. Says, yep, get in my system. Again, this just went straight in. There was no fiddling about or, you know, where is it? It just seemed to work. So they've got their drivers up together, which is kind of nice. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a bit random. I mean, there's only eight controllers, to be fair, on this. I Presumably, the uh, patches are probably more... Um, designed to work with the Axiom 49 and uh, 61, which have the eight additional faders. So I think it's probably a bit unfair, but it does seem to control it. So obviously somebody's done some work and programmed these up. Um, it'd be nice to have some descriptions, I guess, of what does what. Um, maybe they say something in the actual Enigma editor, but uh, I'm not sure. So, I mean, generally, my feeling about this is, I mean, you are paying a little more for this this keyboard, but um, it looks like I'm already have put a lot more TLC into the design, and it's good and chunky. You're getting the rotary encoders, you're getting the additional pads. You've also got the uh, m more complex and flexible operating system that allows you to do the various zoning. Um, the keyboard's really nice. It's got a great feel, and you get aftertouch. You also get the additional MIDI in uh, and the power switch. Very nice. Uh, I'd say, you know, for the extra 60, what is it, 60, 70 bucks, that's, that's pretty good. You'd have to think long and hard whether it was worth saving that for all those additional features.